Welcome to Wire Guild. The tutorial that I'm going to be showing you, I've named the Fairy Wing Pendant, and you'll see why. Uh, the pendant itself, the way the wires have been formed, it almost looks like a, a fairy's wings or a butterfly wings, that kind of thing. Now, the materials you're going to use, I used two pieces of approximately eight inches of one millimeter or 18 gauge round wire and quite a bit of 0.4 mil or 26 gauge round wire. Now, these are interchangeable. If you want to use slightly thinner or slightly thicker, absolutely fine. Go ahead, swap them over. Uh, the focal bead, I used a couple of eight mil Swarovski beads, but I'm going to show you later on how you can change that for something else. So I've got my two pieces of wire and I'm just going to get them straightened at the ends. When we're doing weaving you really need these ends to be reasonably straight so that you're not fighting in between uh, the wire all the time. And there's no point in making life more difficult than it needs to be. So I'm just using uh, some nylon jawed or plastic jawed pliers to straighten that out. But you could use your fingers or slip a cloth over your fingers and use those. You probably stay slightly cleaner than I always do if you used a cloth. Now, when we want two wires to be parallel, you want them to stay at the same distance. And this can be tricky when doing weaving. So I sort of push them on my finger and put my thumb over the top. And I'm just going to get my finer wire. And I'm going to work straight from the reel. I aren't going to cut some off. So checking one of my wires, I'm going to, sorry I'm just freeing a bit more wire off there at the side. I know it's out of shot and you can't see, let's just wrap this around now. So I'm going to wrap around probably three or four times and it's going to give me a nice strong anchor point that I'm going to work from. I'm just going to push those up with my fingers. So once you've got those, bring your other wire in. Now this is going over the top of that wire. They're reasonably close together. It's probably less than a quarter of an inch. Um, probably about, if we're working in mils, maybe four or five mil. So you can see that the wire's coming up to it and then I'm going to wrap around and push in with my thumb. Wrap around, go between, then use my index finger, push down, up, through, Use your thumb, push in, all the way around, through, push in with my thumb again. Now make sure all the time that you're not pulling too tight. Index finger, round, push in. So my index finger and my thumb are being used all the time to keep the wires where they need to be pushed well up. If you let them sort of straggle and sort of go where they want, it won't be as neat. So my left hand is holding everything steady and my right hand is wrapping round. I will keep checking all the time to make sure that I aren't pulling too tight because if you pull too tight what you'll do is you'll bring your two wires together and you don't want that. Now as you can see there's a difference in colour here. My, my silver wire is tarnished don't worry about this. If you've got fine silver at home you find it tarnishes. Obviously me living in Ireland it's a very very wet atmosphere and sh if I forget to put them in a bag they just tarnish off but it doesn't matter it'll clean off. So I'm just going it's almost like one and a half times round and then cross to the other side in a figure of eight and you can see how I use my thumb and my index finger all the time to push those wires in and keep them neat and keep them tight. Now I'm quite sure that you don't want to sit there and watch me weave forever so I'm just going to speed this up. Sometimes you can push it with pliers. If you need the wires to come through you can use uh, the pliers themselves to pull them out and just keep going with the figure of eight. It's rather nice to sit down in front of a good film and just weave. You sort of, you just have to do too much. That's what I tend to do. I forget I'm doing it and then I look down and I've got far too much done and I have to pull some of it back. So I'm going to get some beads out. Sorry, let's just slow that down again. Let's just straighten this up. 
If you find that your wires won't come through, can you see that little wriggle I do? I grip the wire and then do just a little wriggle. There we go. I'm just going to open that up slightly so it doesn't slide back. Let's have a look. Now, I haven't really got enough there, so I'm going to keep weaving and I'm going to do some more. There is no amount set in stone of how much you need. I've probably got, I don't know, maybe a couple of inch there. Uh, what would that be in centimetres? About five centimetres. And what I'm doing is I'm just easing it along the wires because I want it to be in the middle. Now because I'm only working with two beads I don't need this to be huge. If you're going to use look you see it's ever so dirty as this um, if you're going to use a large briolette or something like that you would need to do more so obviously you'd be doing possibly two and a half three inches have I got that in the middle yet not quite just move it a little further there we go I'm just giving it a push to even it up yeah I think we're about in the middle there You don't want it too tight. If you get it pushed up so tight that it's absolutely on each other, you often miss the detail of um, of your weaving backwards and forwards. Now I've got one that's just not quite right there, so I was just giving it a little shove and it's neatened that up. So I'm going to grip in the middle and bend. Bend a bit more. Grip, bend all the way down so it comes together. You notice that I'm keeping these as flat as possible. Now let's just use my pliers and I'll just flatten that. There we go. Putting pliers across anything that you want to manipulate and keep them flat is a good idea because it can't move anywhere. So I've crossed these over. Now I'm going to straighten them back up so that the wires will go up to the top but me nice and even and just move that out of the way so you can see we've got these little like a loop now if I put a bead on there you can see that it would look a little lost on its own so two looks actually quite good so we'll probably do that but let me show you some other other things that I've got so that you can get some different ideas of what you might like to do on yours really really versatile is this the only thing is really you do need to use anything with a hole in now this is a beautiful big briolette they're about 30 carats but if I was making that I'd need to be bigger I'd need to do my wires much larger so I'll push that one out of the way so I'll probably suggest probably about 3 inch if you want to do something that size what else have I got just handy so that I can show you different bits and pieces there's a photo actually I'm going to put at the end showing that briolette so you can see what it looks like. This is um, a 12 mil a turquoise bead and you can see that you could probably add that, ooh, not that colour, uh, <laughs> yeah better not good though. Uh, you could add something like that and maybe a smaller bead, maybe a silver bead or a little, um, no I don't like that colour either. It's because I've only got certain things handy on my table right now. Um, but a little pearl probably would look really lovely with the turquoise on the bottom there. But it's really down to um, whatever you're doing just needs to fit in. But I'm sure you'll find things. Now I've got some little tiny briolettes just in here that I'm going to show you. There we are. They are really quite weeny. I think they might be something like seven by four mil little teenies but you could use one of these let's move you out of the way and you could string it quite high in the top up there now it's really tiny and I know you don't really see it much However, once you did the rest of the weaving, it would make the weaving the star of the piece. And then you just have this little teeny stone in the top as, as you know, the, the sort of sparkly bit of your pendant, if you like. 
So really, you're only limited by your own imagination. So anything you want to use is fine. But the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to get that bit of wire out of the way. Just trim that off. There we go. I had to buy new snips because my old ones went defunct, but they're really good ones. Now, let's just push that end in there. Now, I'm going to use the centre two wires to create my bale. So I'm just going to move the other wires out of the way and then get this curve correct because at the moment it's trying to curve inwards and if anything I'd rather have it trying to curve out than curving in. So my wires at the side yeah sorry I do an awful lot of faffing about I'm just thinking I suppose if I wanted to put something in that tiny I would probably wire across with the wire that I've got now at this point instead of going on and doing the bells but because I'm not I'm going to continue but it's something to keep in mind if you're going to use something tiny maybe use the same bit of wire and um, and fasten that in at that point I'm going to do the same weave that I did all the way around the edge of the piece around the sort of the horseshoe shape or the U shape whatever you want to call it I'm going to do the same weave going up the bale so it's just a figure of eight and I'm going down and around all the way around and then crossing with a figure of eight to the other side as you can see I still use my thumb and my index finger to keep those wires pushed right down and as tight as you can get them but you'll also notice that the wires that I'm a weaving around are opening up slightly they're increasing in width I like that with bales if you don't keep them parallel um, I wouldn't suggest as probably many of you found out when we did the bracelet last time um, I wouldn't suggest a downward you know where you're weaving into a smaller area because it slips so I just speeded that up as uh, it'd be nice if it actually went that quick wouldn't it if I could work that fast but unfortunately no <laughs> Now, your bales, remember you're going to bend them over, so you want to be making about double the length of you want your finished bales to be. Um, you don't want them huge because it's not a huge um, pendant. So I've probably got maybe an inch, two and a half centimetres uh, that I've actually woven there, and I'm just pushing that down tight with my pliers. Once that's done, I need to find my round nose pliers, which I've put somewhere safe. Where have they gone? They are here somewhere. There we go. Just grip across where I want the top to be. If you have fancy uh, parallel bale making pliers, cool, use those. If you haven't, it's alright. So I'm just going to take this wire and that wire and I've bent it ever so slightly because I want it actually to go to the other side of the pendant so I'm just going to tuck it let's have a look in there not really the best place maybe it'd be better if I See what I could do is I could take that fine wire around but if I just lift that wire up and pop it underneath that one there we go that will hold that wire out of the way so let's move that one now to the other side as well so just pop it around and underneath lovely they're out of the way we are going to use those later they're going to be part of the uh, the design that we're going to do but for now they're nice and out of the way let me just trim that I may need some but not all of that so I'm just going to wrap that around the other wire and that will anchor the end of the where we've done the binding so that main frame wire and I'm anchoring it to the other wire just by passing it through a few times now I'm passing that wire through to the other side so it's like it's stitched across that's it 
bring it up and then I'm just going to wrap it around that one as well I'm sure you've seen me with any of the weaving I tend to stitch through and use it almost like a, a sewing thread so let's have a look now at our beads my wires come back to the front of the piece and mm. now if that bead was coming straight down so you can see I've got the wire in the middle that would look okay but I want the wire to go crosswards and I think that bead is too big to be that high so the best way to lower the position of your bead if it was a smaller bead it would be fine there so I'm going to go back through the centre of the opening move the wire down slightly and bring it up through the weaving you will get a little piece on the back where it's actually dropped down but it's not that visible and it means that your wire then is in a better position to place your bead on let's have a look at that yeah that's better it was just too high before it was it was right up underneath the the bale and it just seemed wrong whereas that seems better with that little gap just above it so that will do so I need to pass my wire now through the other side move that out of the way make sure that it's parallel pass it through that side like I say very much like sewing <laughs> if you can get the wire to go through pass it through and pull it tight there we go make sure your beads central because sometimes it can be a little bit awkward and want to go on one side and then I'm going to bring the wire back up through the middle section there we go and then I'm going to pass the wire come here back through the bead so that the bead has got two thicknesses of wire going through the middle one's probably enough it's probably quite strong enough to hold that bead in place but I do tend to oh, I don't know I like to overkill things sometimes I feel that if if I can get two through it will make it you know double the strength so pop it back through the weaving so that my wire has gone to the back of the piece lovely now need to think about the other bead so I'll just give that one a wriggle and make sure it's tight yeah and bring my wire up much further down now if you don't like having the long thread at the back it doesn't really bother me, it doesn't show but if you do you can always go around multiple times slowly bringing the wire down to where you want it to be I've used a contrasting colour rather than two the same and it's mainly because the, these wires over the top look very much like a butterfly so I like two patches of colour and I'm going to go across to the other side down through the stitching and then bring yeah that looks kind of nice doesn't it bring the wire up into the centre never pull your wire that tight especially if you've got a twist in it because it will tighten the twist in you're always better sort of loosening it at the point when it's a soft curve rather than it actually gets to being tight I've gone back through the bead again so I've got my two wires through my bead and making it nice and stable and then I'll go back down between the weaving there's my wire through you go pull that tight okay my beads are in place so now we need to think about these other wires so the wire that I'm shaping now is the wire that was at the outer edge of our framework not the ones that we made the bale out of but the other two and I've brought them down and I'm bringing them in at the top so that you get this nice shape it's almost reflecting 
the shape of the bale with the bale going out wider it's almost reflecting that so I'm just push those together a slightly different shape one side to the other so I'm just gonna push that a little bit and fiddle with it there we go now I've got another piece of fine wire the um, 26 gauge on 0.4 mil as I said earlier with the materials you can make this in much finer wire if you want it makes a more delicate pendant but I know a lot of you particularly on the forum have been saying that you like uh, weaving with the finer wire rather than the heavier gauge so it's just the same I'm getting my hand in the way now I'm weaving this as a figure of eight to hold these two wires together now I'm on a downward slope or it's decreasing in width so it's slipping so I'm having to push it with my finger all the time just to make sure it stays but it is worth it and it's only a tiny little dif distance that we need to do this so backwards and round and under and over you're adding more structural strength probably not so necessary on the gauges that I'm using using one mil wire but if you are going to be using a much finer wire say you're using um, like a 0 0.6 mil you would definitely need that for the extra strength I'm just trying to think what gauge 0 0.6 would be um, it would probably be 24 gauge something like that so pushing down all the time you don't want this to come over the wires that much that it's over the beads just hold the top now curve these in can you see how I go far down on the wire and all the way back up to the top making like a loop and the same with the other side a loop now they don't match so some playing with is needed if you really wanted to make sure that they were exact you could get a circular uh, shape and actually wrap around them but I like them slightly odd I know that's me being weird isn't it that one's definitely got a different curve to it so we'll just fiddle with that one a bit more I think I need sometimes if you use round nose pliers and just grip and twist grip and twist if one hasn't quite curved the way you want it to or say it's straight sometimes with wire you'll get a piece that's harder than the other bits and it won't curve in the same way so using pliers can just help you curve that bit I'm doing it with my fingers because these are meant to be the wings of either a butterfly or a fairy and I always tend to think that they wouldn't be absolutely dead perfect it's probably my own fancy but that's the way I like to do it but if you want yours exactly matching use a pen or something like that and just wrap them around the pen now I'm going to pop the wire back through the frame so grip where it's going to go through with your flat pliers and bend the wire that will give you a bend and then I can take whoops I can take this end of wire here and I can pop it through the framework I'm being gentle I know it looks like I'm incredibly rough but that was quite gentle there and then I know where I'm pulling to because I put that bend in so I can pull this wire through put my thumb on the loop and pull it up and then it won't pull too far and I can straighten that neaten it and it hasn't gone further than I want it so nice bend in the other side like that see there and then when I take this end of wire and pass it through the middle go on through you go I'll pull all the way down to that bend and then I don't pull any more and it maintains the curves that we put in like an upside down heart shape really now let's get the end of this wire and I'm going to curl it and I'm actually going to fasten it around the bottom of the, the wing if you like of the curl that we've just done like that and I'll do the same 
with the other side. This is how it will stay secure. We're actually wrapping it against itself. Now I have too much wire there. Let me just give it a pull and then I'll trim some of it off. There we go. Yeah, let's get rid of that bit. I mean, there's no point in fighting with wire that's too long. You just make life far more difficult for yourself. So I'm gently easing that round. I don't want to mash it down because the last thing I want to do is spoil that shape of that curve that I've made on the bottom, that, that wing shape. I don't want to ruin that. So nice and gently and then if you need to trim some more off, trim some more. Back on. Smooth down. Don't want any little sharp edges. These are not fairies with stings. We want fairies without any sharp bits. So just make sure that's smoothed down. There we go. And the same with the other side. If you wanted, um, depending on how fancy you want your, your pendant to be, once you've got to this point and you've actually trimmed these off and got them down, you could leave it at that. I mean, obviously you'd have to trim the other ends off as well. You couldn't do with those spiking in your chest. That hurts. Um, <laughs> but you could make a little curl at the top with them, trim them off, and that could be, you know, sufficient just with those two little bits tied off. Now then, my two edge bits, I'm going to um, just get that out of the way. I'm going to bring them round to the front but I want a curve so the curve is going the other way to the one that I've already put in and the same on the other side just I'm having fun and games with my fine wire so let's get this out of the way so I'll just wrap it around there bit of extra um, strength here and I'm going to pass it through the main frame of the body at the back. It is one of the things I notice about weaving. I do end up with multiple um, pieces that are in the way. Now then, I can curve that up and sort of take it across the front and sort of bend the other way. Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, apart from the fact that the bales aren't quite straight, but I'll straighten those up in a bit. So these wires will go neatly sort of through that opening at the top. And then I'll find somewhere to bind them. I'm going to have to get rid of some of these loose bits, so let's... Right, okay. Just need to straighten that slightly. And this top edge is a little bit out of skew, but it'll go back in. So that one was already wrapped around several times, so I'm just going to trim that and then press the end and just smooth it over so that it goes in. Lovely. Now then, let's look at these other two bits. Where's this one going? Yeah, I need to pass this one through at least once to make sure that it stays. I'll stitch that through. Now, I've gone through the main body and I've come back and I'm going to go through that other wire and it's just going to hold it. It's extra strength. As I've said before, it doesn't really need it, but I'm almost doing a little figure of eight on that side wire just to make sure that it stays in place. Also, it's helping um, finish off that finer wire because it's giving it sort of several wraps around. I'll trim that off and I'll just smooth it down. There we go. 
Now then, another bit here. Uh, da -da -da. Let's have a look. If it hasn't been wrapped round already, it needs to go through again, but take some of that length off. And we'll just pop it through there and pull that tight. I need to go around again. Through the weaving. And then pull it so it's tight. Lovely. Hit everything in sight and shake the camera. That's just what I need. Go around again. And then just trim off and smooth that down. There we go. Make sure there's no little ends. Okay. So, these two bits here, right, where should we put them? Obviously, if you had more wire, you know, maybe if you'd started with sort of 10 inch or 12 inch, you could go backwards and forwards and make this as as ornate and fancy as you wanted. You could add silver beads to these wires so that you get movement on the piece. But I'm just going to fasten it to that wire there. So, pliers. Curve it round from the end, pass it through, tighten as I pass through. This would be easier with snipe nosed pliers, and as you probably noticed all the way through this tutorial, I haven't been using them. That's because one of my darling children borrowed them to do something with, and I don't know where they've gone. They do these things to me. Right, let's just snip that end off. And we'll close that down. Lovely. It's good to be versatile when it comes to pliers. <laughs> Especially when you've got teenage boys in the house that want to help themselves to your tools. And let's do the other side. Let's try round nose this time, that might make it easier. That's it through and ease it up. Hold the end, tighten it down. Notice I've got my finger over the bit that's actually I'm pulling against because I don't want to take the curve out of it. Sometimes when you pull too tight, you can pull the wire straight. And if you put like an ornamental curve in, pulling it straight is a bad idea. Now, look how far that way that is so let's just give that a, a pull uh, a bit more there we go straight so lovely our little fairy wing pendant I've got a little hole in the weaving on the top so I'm just going to give that a wriggle with my fingernails there we are probably pulled it with the pliers too much backs are lovely on these really really like the backs I think that they're, they're really cute Front's very pretty as well, little wings. So whether it's a bug or whether it's a fairy, I can't wait to see what you've made. Uh, one's cleaned, as you can see, all lovely and shiny, they look great. Uh, this one is using a amethyst briolette, and so is this, but much larger one. I used uh, three wires instead of two, but still exactly the same idea. Thank you for watching. Happy wrapping. <laughs>